Hello everyone, my name is Holly and welcome back to your monthly dose of book releases where we highlight fantasy, sci-fi, and horror coming out in the following month. I know it's been a while, I used to do these every single month for many years, but I'm back and back with a bang because I'll be talking about 14 books releasing in July, so just next month. Holy moly, next month is July. It feels like it should be April. So bring up your Goodreads, your story graph, your PDF, phone, or just pencil and paper because I have a very exciting list here for you and you're going to want to keep track of everything. But before we get into the said list, I'm super excited to be working with BetterHelp again, who is sponsoring today's video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it is 100% online. You can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and professional therapists that can help you with a wide range of issues. And I know personally getting started was the hardest part of therapy and that's why it's awesome that BetterHelp makes it so easy to begin. You just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences for therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist for you from their network. And then you can talk to your therapist however which way you feel most comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, video, or even phone call. That last one's a little scary. <laughs> and you even have the option to message your therapist at any given time and schedule live sessions whenever it's convenient for you. And if for whatever reason your therapist doesn't end up being the correct match for you, you can switch to a new one at no additional charge. So with better help, you get the same professionalism and quality that you would expect from regular in-office therapy but with a therapist who is custom picked for you and has more scheduling flexibility and is even more affordable. So if you're interested in starting therapy with BetterHelp, then you can head on over to betterhelp.com. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash Holly Hearts Books, where you can get 10% off your first month of therapy. That will be linked down below for you. Now onto these awesome books. I just realized I don't have lipstick on, so I'm gonna have to put some on. <laughs> Now I don't look so dead. Okay, so starting off with quite an exciting finale. On July 11th, we have The Traitor. This is Anthony Ryan's most recent fantasy series called The Covenant of Steel. Um, the first book is The Pariah, if that jogs your memory. And it is finally coming to a close after three whole years. It's set in an elaborate and battle-torn fantasy world and told through an awesome um, chronicle style. This series follows the tumultuous life of Alwyn Scribe, a former outlaw who finds redemption and a new purpose in life after being trained as a scribe. The Traitor, which not only has another striking cover, but it sounds like it's going to be quite an epic finale. And then I have Boys in the Valley. I'm always on the lookout for a good horror book, and this one sounds like it could be a contender. This is being promoted as Lord of the Flies meets The Exorcist freaking spooky as hell. Um, it's set with the backdrop of the Pennsylvania countryside in early 20th century. And there's a remote orphanage, which becomes the site of a demonic possession. So clearly it's dark and bleak with some violence. And honestly, I don't know what's more scary than a Catholic boy's orphanage. <laughs> the author chose the perfect horror location to tell a horrifying story. So if you're looking for something to keep you up at night, this one is for you, my friend. And then we have Ebony Gates. Honestly, this one had me at the tagline that it was a female John Wick with dragon magic set in a contemporary San Francisco Chinatown. Like, what? My mind was blown by, by that uh, blurb or tagline, whatever you want, word you want to use. That's like a hodgepodge magnet of goodness, and it's blurbed by Andrea Stewart, the author of the Bone Shard trilogy. So that's even more um, enticing to read because I, I love Andrea as a person and also um, I love her books so much. So if she's blurbing something like this, I want to read it. This is an urban fantasy filled with magical elements from Asian influences. And we follow our main character, who is a retired assassin, who is mostly known as the Butcher of Beijing. She seeks a peaceful existence in San Francisco, but soon finds herself entangled in clan politics and bound to a death god who must restore the Ebony Gate. Um, it sounds like a very intriguing start to a new series, and I hope it's as unique as it sounds. All right, we are moving on to a new date. July 18th, we have Immortal Longings. This is probably one of the more hyped books on this list. This is Chloe Gong's debut adult fantasy. That's right, the author mostly known for her hit YA series has blessed us with a new epic adult fantasy. Definitely my kind of book for sure. It's loosely inspired by Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. Every year, these Twin cities host a set of games in which the main prize is riches beyond any competitor's wildest dreams. 
but for our main character winning means getting the opportunity to get closer uncle the king and to bring down like the monarchy very much sounds like a recipe from the hunger games but with a much different setting and an interesting magic system so if you're craving more of that then this should be on your radar i believe this is going to be a planned trilogy the jassad air isn't this cover just like absolutely striking i love it and this is the author's debut so she was truly blessed um this is inspired by one of my favorite things to see in fantasy and that is egypt it's like egypt nautical in western like these are like my three favorite settings in fantasy for some reason so i will definitely be reading this one soon um, we follow sylvia and she's been in hiding for half of her life after her parents were brutally murdered and due to unfortunate events sylvia's magic is revealed to the absolute last person who she'd want to see it and now sylvia must um cooperate with her biggest enemy in order to ensure her freedom it's got a lot of things going for it fantasy epic with high stakes deathly competitive games and a lost heir with a secret identity so it's getting compared to a lot to uh throne of glass which is really interesting so um look out for it on the 18th speaking of nautical fantasy we have dark water daughter this is a fantasy set in the world of pirates which i think makes it a perfect summer read um i actually want to do like a summer fantasy book recommendations video and i'm planning on reading this and hoping that i can added to that list so be sure to look out for that video i guess so we have our main character mary a young mage capable of controlling the weather through song so i guess like kind of like a siren but i believe they're called storm singers in this universe well she's supposed to be married off but decides to leave and that causes a ripple effect <laughs> see what i did there <laughs> of problems because storm singers are very valuable and everyone including like warring factions pirates privateers uh, want a piece of her and with a very interesting nautical magic system this first book to a new pirate fantasy series sounds really really fun blade of dream this is a book i am very excited about it's a sequel to age of ash which is a book i really enjoyed so i've been highly anticipating this um continuation of the story i find the concept of this series really fascinating we have like a street rat kind of character who gets herself deep into some wild information and uh crazy magic i did read that this doesn't directly follow its predecessor though strange because the first one definitely left with left off with a cliffhanger this is a new story that parallels that first book's events actually like intersecting with a few scenes here and there but is somewhat uh acts as a standalone i guess this does not mean that you can read this first do do that and you'll break my heart <laughs> but anyways I'm pumped for this and I'm very curious to see for myself how this story is told. And on that same date, I believe we're still on July 18th, we have Athura Grave. The Graven trilogy is finally getting its conclusion. Athura Grave tells the end of our space crew. The series is a space opera that is often compared to Mass Effect and even Red Rising. And now you can finish the story or binge read the whole trilogy once and for all. In book one, we follow Caden across a multiverse as he's on a quest for vengeance after his family's subjugation and slaughter. Actually, found family is one of the most prominent themes in this series, so if that's a trope that you, like, desperately want, you're going to find it here. I'm very excited to see what else Essa Hansen comes out with next. I'd actually be incredibly interested in a fantasy from her because I think she would make it really unique, so, uh... I'll be on the lookout for that. But she's a sci-fi girly, so I totally get it. <laughs> Silver Nitrate. This sounds like a film horror cult classic in book form. A reviewer actually named Jennifer described this book in a really interesting way, so I'm going to quote them. They quoted it as two depressed by adults who are obsessed with horror films low-key find themselves in the middle of one. And that, my friends, should honestly be the blurb. <laughs> this reviewer should be getting royalties. This novel takes place in 1990s Mexico City, where our main character is in the film industry, and he is secretly in love with his friend Tristan. Tristan finds out his neighbor happens to be an old horror movie director, and then later on, they are involved in a movie that that director couldn't finish, which has a very dark background, a curse that will make them experience supernatural things. So we have a paranormal cult-like 
horror. Sounds super spooky, the cover matches the vibe super well, and Sylvia Moreno Garcia can literally do no wrong. All right, so we might as well keep the horror trend going by talking about Camp Damascus. This follows Rose, a devout follower in an mega church in Montana, seemingly happy in her belief system, but things start to turn when she begins seeing a ghostly woman and suddenly she's like coughing up flies, apparently. <laughs> and then what comes next is a horrifying mystery that seems to all lead back to the church's mysterious gay conversion camp. Whew, that is a one hell of a plot, quite literally. This book sounds like it has very ambitious goals, especially in like a short amount of time. I believe it is a shorter book, but man, it sounds terrifying. And early reviews are pretty good so far. Okay, so we are finally moving on to a new date, and that is July 25th. We have The Sun and the Void. This is a new fantasy debut that I have actually read already. It's a South American inspired story that introduces two young women, Rena and Eva, both unwanted and fighting off the very real temptation of dark magic. So there is magic, romance, and sword fights. It's filled with creatures inspired by folklore. Some characters have antlers and tails, which makes it all the more interesting. Um, if you love adult magical tales, stories inspired by like Latin America, or just want your next fantasy story to be political and sapphic, then The Sun and the Void is for you. I have an official review for this one as a short on my channel if you want to check it out. And then we have Bonesmith. Honestly, this is one of the covers on this list that totally won me over. It reminds me of video game artwork, which is the way to win my heart. Um, this is being compared to Gideon the Ninth meets the White Walkers from Game of Thrones. That, got, that like gets me pumped. <laughs> that tells me it's dark as hell and necromancy magic. So we have Ren, who is a bonesmith and has trained to be a Valkyr, a warrior who fights ghosts and she must journey into a haunted wasteland to rescue a kidnapped prince. Oh, and this is also a YA novel. Um, the cover reminds me of like an indie adult fantasy, which always have the best covers, by the way. Um, so I thought I'd clarify it is YA. And then we have a Benny's song, our only middle grade on this list. Um, Abeni, our main character, is growing up in a small village in Africa. She's been having strange dreams, and it, and it turns out other kids in her village um, have been having them as well. And these dreams are about a magical song that makes kids forget everything and leave and never come back. And Abeni is determined to find them and get them back. It's a very interesting concept, and I love the setting. Um, and I know this author has written many other great books, so if you've read them, then you should definitely check this new release out next month. And then finally, last but certainly not least, Thick as Thieves. This is another exciting sequel coming out soon to Among Thieves, which is a high-stakes fantasy novel about, well, thieves. You guessed it. <laughs> it follows our same group of characters as they go on a dangerous journey. It's a very gritty world full of magic and backstabbing. A lot of readers are excited for this conclusion. Obviously, it's a sequel, so I can't talk a whole lot about it, but um, be sure to check it out when it lands in bookstores on July 25th. Alrighty, everyone, so those are all the books I have time for today. There are plenty more great sounding books um, coming out in July, so be sure to let us know any that I didn't mention down below in the comments, and while you're down there, tell me which book from my list that you're most excited about. I know it's hard to pick one. Heck, you can say all of them. I completely agree. So like this video if you liked. It really helps me out. Um, subscribe if you are not. I'd love to have you here. And for those of you who are subscribed, thank you so, so much for uh, enjoying my content. <laughs> so until we meet again, happy reading.